Hey, my name is Josh Pempishot. In celebration of the Great Awakening and UFO disclosure, I've put something together that's really amazing that I think you're really going to like. Are you interested in conspiracies, ancient history, mythology, UFOs and aliens, psychedelics and magic? Then get ready to have your mind blown, because I've got some information for you that's never been presented before. We're going to take a trip around the world and take a look at all sorts of secret symbolism. The first episode is called Cave Art, but I should warn you, this is unlike anything you've ever seen before in your life. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> well, that sounds like blasphemy. Why is gonna hurt the children? Yeah, I want that man arrested immediately. You can't do that, sir. This is America. Sir, this is a Wendy's drive-thru. Uh, all I think you have to fear is for yourself. Our time. Good. It's estimated that the first cave art appeared approximately 35 to 40,000 years ago. This is also the same time estimated for the emergence of Cro-Magnon Man. New studies are emerging linking the changes in radiation of the Earth's atmosphere to potential species manifestations and growth cycles. This could explain why there are giant gaps in the evolutionary chain, especially as it relates to modern humans. This is in contradistinction to the stoned ape theory that suggests man evolved in some Darwinian process that began with primates consuming mushrooms, figuring out mental processes, and ending up with modern man. The point I'm making here is that since we know Neanderthal man was hunting and cooking for the last hundred to three hundred thousand years, maybe it wasn't until Cro-Magnon man came along that humans were able to process the mushroom experience in a way that progressed humanity forward culturally and spiritually. We know that psilocin, the active ingredient in mushrooms, is one molecule off from DMT and every plant and animal species has DMT in them. Maybe Neanderthal man was not capable of utilizing the functions within DMT that allows processing of information in a way that we can process it today, like dreaming for example. In the ancient world, the people viewed the earth as feminine because it gave birth to all the species of plants, animals, and mankind. But the worship of the almighty god or goddess was related to the general appreciation of nature, which was not seen as male or female, but rather hermaphroditic. The reason for this was because the ancient people believed in matrilineal units of society, which we now call tribes, and collectively they consumed the magic mushroom, which allowed them direct access and communication with nature, i.e. god or goddess. The mushroom is a hermaphroditic birth, which is an ideal state of perfection in nature requiring no partner to reproduce. The mushroom was considered the holy sacrament worldwide in all cultures and societies from the most ancient times up until the modern day. This is the essence of the biggest secret in existence, the biggest conspiracy on earth, a conspiracy perpetuated by the Catholic Church, Vatican, and the Jesuits, as well as hundreds of its controlled institutions. In fact, secret societies exist for the very purpose of concealing this one ultimate secret that you're going to learn all about. The mushroom can be found to exist behind every facet of the ancient world, so we'll start with cave art dating back 35 to 40,000 BC. Many of the rock glyphs you'll be seeing over the next few minutes have mushrooms as features of the head or body of some creature, entity, deity, etc. These are not entities or deities, though, as some people may have been led to believe. At the same time, they're not hallucinations of people on mushrooms drawing what they were seeing, either. These are personifications of the mushroom itself as if it were a man or person. This is mankind creating the first mythology, symbolism meant to bring the viewer's mind back to one central concept or understanding. This understanding is that mankind's wisdom and intellect as well as spiritual growth is all owed to the magic mushroom. In fact, the Greeks have one myth titled Metamorphosis, wherein two examples are cited of their belief that mankind emerged from the ground out of fungus. These are actual Greek creation myths. It seems to me the ancient people believe the mushroom started all life on earth, but that's a philosophical topic and we'll leave it for another time. For now, just understand that the mushroom was the central focus and beginning of all myth and religion worldwide. The first image here is one of the oldest ones known. The mushroom has serpentine features. This is a first association of the serpent with the idea of wisdom. This becomes very common throughout the world. You will see them used interchangeably and sometimes together, which is even more revealing. Today, this is something everyone takes for granted without thinking about it. It's not that the serpent represents wisdom. That's for the uninitiated. For the initiated, the secret occult meaning is that the serpent represents the magic mushroom. That's part of the key to unlocking all of the ancient mysteries. Later in this presentation, you'll be given the other magic keys. 
The next images we see are examples where the heads are mushrooms. Because of a recent interest in ancient alien theories, many people have come to the conclusion that these are ancient astronauts or space alien visitations. That's complete nonsense. There's nothing in the ancient world that alludes to any of that. Only nature and all it encompasses, which includes the UFO as natural phenomena, which I'll get to in another presentation. The corona, or halo, you see around the head represents the gills or underside of the cap of the mushroom. This is where the spores drop from, and sometimes you can see them pictured on the ends of the lines, striations, leading up to the ridge of the cap. Later on, as the patriarchy took over and images were displayed, it first became the symbol of enlightenment, then it became the blessed and holy halo. The evolution of the symbolism and mythology began to include the bird as well very early on. In fact, the two main goddesses of ancient Minoan Greece are the bird goddess and the serpent goddess, and the first mythologies we read about in Sumer and India involve battles between birds and serpents and eventually personified in later myth. Now I'm going to give you the second part of the key so you can unlock all the ancient mysteries by yourself. This is the most powerful secret knowledge that has ever been presented publicly. The bird goddess represents the cap of the mushroom, and the serpent goddess represents the stem. That's it. That's the most important information you'll need to understand the most serious secrets of the secret societies. This is the key to unlocking the mysteries and the occult symbolism behind much artwork. We'll be using these keys many times over the next presentations, and you'll begin to understand their importance. Equally important to keep in mind when viewing and deciphering these images for their secret symbolism is to watch for little details such as dots lining the ridge of the mushroom caps. Sometimes the dots reveal a lot about the truth of the image when you may not otherwise see a mushroom or the presence of spores at the end of the lines. These are common in cave art as well as Indian and Persian coins and frescoes. Sometimes in rock art, especially Native America, but also Saudi Arabia and Siberia reveal what is often referred to as the Thunderbird. This is simply the magic mushroom, but personified into the image of a bird. The Thunder association comes from the fact that the ancient people believed thunder engendered the birth of the mushrooms. Therefore, thunder gods were a very important part of ancient mythology. Ultimately, we must realize that all mythology has four primal features on its exterior and one central core feature. The orbiting features are the four elements of earth, fire, air, and water. The central core element is the magic mushroom, which embodies all four primal elements and the fungal kingdom, being the highest up on the biological food chain. Here are a few more examples of mushroom rock art from around the world. In the following presentations, you'll see all sorts of variations of these themes on Stella's figurines and ancient coins. All mythologies and religions worldwide can be traced back to these key concepts and symbols. Once you understand this, a whole new world of knowledge and understanding will open up before your very eyes. What's more, you'll start to see for yourself how the mushroom is the central core root of many conspiracy theories that may have previously eluded you as to their hidden meaning. There are many profiteers out there selling all sorts of misinformation and disinformation to the unsuspecting masses. While conspiracies like ancient aliens might seem interesting because it deals with things like the unknown, most of those theories are completely unreal. The information in these next presentations is not only believable, but completely down to earth and rational. Instead of relying on faith, I've relied on something that is almost lost and forgotten, the extremely important quality of mind called reason. This concludes the presentation entitled You Can't Unsee It, Episode 1, Cave Art. For more information on this subject, visit ancientpsychedelia.com and check out the free online version of the book Ancient Psychedelia, Alien Gods and Mushroom Goddesses. Thanks for watching. One last thing I should mention, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me in my work, here are several ways you can do that. It does help tremendously and I really appreciate it.